Hello friends, today we are going to be talking about contemporary romance, a genre that I just tried for the first time this month. Super excited to talk to you about it. Let's jump in. So if you're anything like me and you think about romance novels, you might be recalling a time of your life where romance novels were pretty much always adorned with Fabio on the cover, and that is what I presume to be romance. And my opinion on what constituted a romance novel really hasn't changed, even though I didn't know particularly much about the genre, aside from the fact that pretty much all of the time, couples are going to get their HEA, which is their happily ever after. So this was not a genre that I was particularly interested in reading, just because it takes place in our world. And if it's going to be gimmicky and cliche, it's really not the genre for me. But my friend Yolanda a few months ago did a video about trying contemporary romance for the first time and how she was surprised that she actually found a few authors that she genuinely liked. One of these authors was Emily Henry. Now, I knew nothing about Emily Henry before deciding to start reading some of her books. And her newest book, Funny Story, came out, I believe, in April April of 2024. So I kept seeing it every time I was going to my local bookstore. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. All of her books are episodic, so it means that they are single books. You can read them without having read any of the other stories. However, they all take place in the same universe, which is really fun because you can pick up on little nuances and little tidbits and Easter eggs that she's left there for readers that have read all of her works. Now, I was shocked as to how much I loved <laughs> her style of writing. Not only her style of writing, but the world that she creates and the stories themselves. I could not have been more wrong about contemporary romance if I tried. And the thing that I feel like most people don't really realize is like it's the best parts of a rom-com mixed with so much character building in one book. I mean, how it doesn't get much better than that. Often when we talk about character work, especially in the fantasy space, we often lean on Joe Abercrombie for our grimdark fantasy and we lean on Robin Hobb because they are typically the pillars of character work in the fantasy side of booktube. And I feel like we're doing a disservice to authors of other genres, especially genres that we have deemed to be women's fiction or romance because those are genres specifically written for women. And the character work that is taking place in these books is quite astounding in that it is excellent. Emily Henry is a prime example and really should be talked about in the same way that we talk about a Joe Abercrombie or a Robin Hobb because what she is able to do in less than 300 pages they are doing over the course of many, many books. And this was something that I did not realize was a standard for a lot of contemporary romance authors. Emily Henry is not the only person to do this. In addition to reading Emily Henry's books in the last little bit, I have also picked up books by Abby Jimenez. I've read four of her works now, and I have to say that she, while not as strong, I feel, as Emily Henry, does an excellent job and actually tackles very difficult topics in her works, such as mental, physical abuse, infertility, and there's a whole slew of others. But before we really get into the minutia of all of it, I want to talk more about Emily Henry. Emily Henry has five books that are considered contemporary romance. These are Funny Story, Happy Place, People We Meet on Vacation, Beach Read, and the last one that I am now blanking on is Book Lovers. Book Lovers. Each of these is, of course, a romance. It is set in a contemporary world, meaning that it is in our world, even though a lot of the places that these people live are fictional, but they are adjacent to real places such as North Bear Shores in Michigan is a fictional place, but it's supposed to be close to Traverse City. And in Book Lovers, we have a small town which does not exist that is close to Asheville, North Carolina, which obviously does. So she has taken aspects of our real world and then built upon them to create a fictional part of that story, which is really, really fun because for those of us that are quite imaginative, we like to picture ourselves going into unknown worlds, unknown places. This allows us to do that in that way that we appreciate fantasy, even though we are not in a fantasy book or novel. So in Emily Henry's style of writing, we typically have two characters, man and woman. It is almost exclusively heteronormative couples. I do not know if she will ever write queer romance, but right now that is not something that's ever happened. And they, they go on 
an emotional journey. And one of the things that Emily Henry does exceptionally well is that it's not only her main female protagonist that is being fleshed out fully. It is often the love interest as well that is given quite a backstory. And it often in several of the books, it is either family members or friends that also feel fleshed out, feel real. And the situations in which people find themselves are not cliche, gimmicky, or kitsch. They are situations that I know people who have experienced these things. I myself have experienced these things. They are very much taken from real life, but they are done in a way that is often humorous and comical, but all the while just gut-wrenching and heart-wrenching because you are able to relate to these characters in a way that is just so magnificent. She is a master of her craft, and I feel like we need to be talking about her more. Now, I'm going to talk about each of her books and give a little brief synopsis on what each of them is. I'm going to go in the order in which I read them, and the first one I picked up is Funny Story. Funny Story is the story of Daphne. She is our main female protagonist in this book who has just been left by her fiancé for her fiancé's childhood platonic best friend and she ends up moving in with the ex-boyfriend of the platonic best friend and they pretend to be a couple in order to get back at the people that left them. This is, I believe, probably Emily Henry's funniest book. It is exceedingly well written. The banter is great. It hits all the right notes for humor. All the while, it deals with very severe abandonment issues, not only for uh, Daphne, but also for Miles, who is the the other main character, I would argue, in this book. In addition, we have fleshed out characters such as Ashley, who is dealing with being recently divorced, what that looks like as a single mother. And it's just so well executed for people who were forced to move around a lot as a kid, for people who are out of place, who aren't in their hometown or don't have family and friends close by. This is a highly relatable book. I really, really enjoyed this. This was a 4.5 stars for me. It just missed that mark just, just slightly for me to be a five stars. But on all in all, I really, really loved it. And if this is what Emily Henry is going to be putting out into the world, like I cannot wait to see what her next book is going to be. The next book that I read was Beach Read. And Beach Read is the story of January and Augustus, aka Gus, both of whom are authors, both of whom write in different genres. Uh, January is a romance author, whereas Gus is a contemporary dark fiction author. They were rivals in college and they have somehow ended up in the same small town as neighbors. This is a five star read. It is so, so excellent in terms of tackling what it is like to have unresolved issues with a loved one once they are deceased. It is a great book in terms of tackling what childhood trauma can do to us to impact us, how it affects our adult decisions, how we go about our outlook and out, our views on life, the world. This was an excellent, excellent book. Once again, Emily Henry just like knocking it out of the park with it feeling very relatable, very raw for people who have dealt with divorce, separation, uh, anxiety, a parent with illness, a parent unexpected death. It was just such a well done book. Highly, highly recommend Beatry. The third book that I read is People We Meet on Vacation. And this is a slightly different one for her in that this was a friends to lovers book where the two characters of the book, they have been best friends since childhood. Well, not since childhood, since college. They met in college and they had a falling out. And the story is an interesting timeline jumping in that it takes you on a journey where they would go on summer vacations for the last several years. They're falling apart and then they're coming, they're trying to rekindle their friendship throughout the story. It is a really, really well done book for anyone who ended up in a romantic partnership with someone that they were friends with for a significant period of time before they got together, or if you have lost a meaningful friendship in your life, it is very reminiscent of that time of when you're just starting college, when you're finishing college, when you're very unsure is what life is going to look like for you. It hit me in all the right fields. I loved this book. In addition to that, it was very well done in terms of people who are very much set in routines, people who do not do well in terms of being thrown into new situations, 
people who maybe have a little bit of OCD and anxiety. I thought that she tackled this very, very well. I loved this book. This was another five star read for me. The fourth book of hers that I read was Book Lovers and this was a really, really fun story. This is kind of an enemies to lovers type trope, but even though they're not quite enemies, it's just that we have our two characters who are both involved in the publishing world and they aren't necessarily on the same side, but they get thrust into a situation where they are very much together. This book, in addition to having the romantic relationship, deals very heavily with sibling relationships and the fear of people moving on without you. And I really loved that aspect of this book. I will say, for me, of all of the side characters in all of the books, this one was probably the worst for me in which I really struggled with a lot of the sisters' behaviors. But all in all, I highly, highly enjoyed this book, especially if you are someone who is a writer, an author, or wants to be. This is a very fun read. I highly recommend it. Now, my last read of Emily Henry, which I have already read twice in the last week because I loved it so much, is Happy Place. Happy Place, I think is possibly one of the best books I've ever read. This was a book that just shot an arrow into my soul and watched it shatter for all of the right reasons. This is a book for people who have had a love that has embedded itself into their soul and they do not know how to move on or function without that person being there. This is a book for people who struggle with life moving forward and not knowing where your place is in that world, outgrowing friendships, outgrowing places of time that have meant so much to you and not being able to revisit them anymore. This book was so beautifully articulated, not just in terms of the romance where it is a second chance romance, but in terms of the friendship group that it surrounds these two people and the place in which they are being forced to leave. It was such an emotional journey. I am not someone who cries when I read and I cried five separate times while reading this book just because it was so relatable. For anyone who has moved away from their friends and struggled to maintain connection with them or really just struggled with themselves or has singularly worked towards one goal their whole life only to realize when they get there that it's not necessarily everything they hoped it would be and they wanted it to be and coping with the anxiety and loss of that aspect of themselves. It was just such a beautifully well done book. I cannot say enough good things about Emily Henry. Please, please, please check out these books. Now, before I finish wrapping up talking about my journey with contemporary romance, we need to talk about Abby Jimenez. Now, Abby Jimenez is an interesting case of giving authors a second chance because her first series, which is called The Friend Zone, which is a trilogy of romance novels, contemporary romance novels, they do not follow the same characters in each book, but they follow characters that have been mentioned in the previous books. I read that trilogy after her newest trilogy, which is the Part of Your World trilogy. And I really, really appreciated the Part of Your World trilogy because each book I found dealt with a topic that was probably not something you would expect to encounter in a romance novel. And Abby actually gives trigger warnings in the beginnings of each of her books because she wants readers to know that this is not just going to be your typical rom-com type setting, but it is going to be something that might hit you in a way that is a bit too close to home, depending on what your life experiences have been. Part of Your World, which is book one of this trilogy, deals with physical and mental abuse. It was quite hard to read at certain points, but also the way that she wrote the characters and their coming to understand what has been happening to them, I found to be quite interesting. Book two deals with high anxiety. People with high anxiety not necessarily knowing how to cope with that anxiety. And I, I appreciated this so, so much because I feel like mental health is something that we're only really starting to talk about and we still have very little understanding of what makes people tick. And often we judge people based on behaviors that we don't quite understand. And a lot of the time, those behaviors are rooted in anxiety. And I really appreciated the way that she did this. 
and book three, which was, uh, the book two was just, was called Yours Truly, and book three in this series was Just for the Summer, and Just for the Summer deals with abandonment issues, and I really just was blown away by that story, and all three of them are incredible in their own right. I definitely think that it is worth your time to read Abby Jimenez, but please be aware that if you start with The Friend Zone, you are going to be disappointed. The first book of The Friend Zone is not a good book. And this is not to say that Abby Jimenez is a bad author. The writing of the book is fine. It's the content within the book itself that is highly problematic. But it seems that she has corrected this significantly. And even with book two of The Friend Zone, uh, if you wanna go and look at Goodreads reviews, so many people say that this is a second chance author. And I'm so glad that I decided to give her another go because this book is so incredible and I feel like she has really only gotten better with each book that she has pushed out and that is evident with the part of your world trilogy. So all in all, contemporary romance, not at all what I was expecting, not at all what I was thinking romance was. Romance to me in my brain really was that Fabio-esque cover where it was kitschy, gimmicky, and there wasn't any substance. And these books are evocative, raw, full of substance, full of emotion, full of meaning, full of character-driven plot. And I really do think that we owe it to the genre, not just to classify it as something that is less than and actually give it a shot, even if it's something that's out of your comfort zone, which it was for me, and I ended up absolutely loving it. If this is your first time here, welcome to Fantasy A Watch. This isn't typically what I talk about. I tend to talk about more fantasy books than anything else. However, this year has been more of a year of exploration for me with different genres and seeing what it is that I like and do not like now as a reader because we as beings evolve and change. We are not sedentary. If we are staying the same in everything that we do, I think we're doing it wrong. We need to push ourselves and reading is a great way to do that just to see if we're, our tastes have changed and mine definitely have over the last few years. I am finding that I am having a really great reading year in terms of finding new authors, new styles, new genres, new settings that I really enjoy. And it's something that I really encourage you to do as well. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you would like to help to continue further supporting the channel, you can hit like and subscribe if you aren't already. You can leave me a comment down below to let me know if you've read anything by Emily Henry or Abby Jimenez, or if there is a contemporary romance author that you think I should read. I am excited to check out more of the genre. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Goodreads to keep up with what I'm reading, all of that is in the description down below. Thank you so much for spending your time with me once again, and as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.